calculus students. How you doing? It is, uh, I think I look extra tired, sorry. I am, but uh, wanted to get these videos done. And uh, so it's 8.30 on a Thursday night and we're gonna knock these out. Now for, uh, this starts our study of trigonometry, which I love. Um, there are gonna be two videos, 4.1a and 4.1b, just because I can't fit everything on my board and I wanted to make sure that you could see it nice and big, okay? So um, 4.1, so this starts our three chapter uh, fun spree on trigonometry. And so this is on radian and degree measure. You did learn radians in uh, algebra two, but I wanted to go over it again because it's, it's just worth repeating. And, and it's very important. Radians is all we use in AP calculus. We don't use degrees, right? It's not like, oh, you learn degrees, you know, earlier in geometry and things like that. And then radians is this other thing. We actually only use radians for good reasons because they actually do make some formulas easier. And it does make sense when you use it, the radians on a circle, as you'll see. So why do we study trigonometry? Because it is the study of the earth. There are so many um, problems that we would not be able to do, we would not be able to solve if we didn't have trigonometry. So many years ago, all we had was the Pythagorean theorem, not that it wasn't great, but where we could compare three sides of a right triangle, right? But what about if we wanted to compare, if we had an angle in a side, what about if we couldn't measure a mountain, um, but we could walk away from that mountain, we knew how far we were from it, and we could use what was called um, in the old days a sextant to look up to um, the highest point on that mountain. We could use tangent um, to figure out um, how tall that mountain is, even though we couldn't climb it. So we use trig a lot actually to define our world. And um, so let's take a look. Um, so what is the vocab for angles, first of all? Um, so I just have an XY plane here, and we're just going to look at the initial side, terminal side, standard position, and direction. So an initial side of an angle is obviously the first side you draw. We do tend to put that on the positive x-axis. So this would be the initial side. And then normally you naturally, when you make an angle, rotate upwards. It's just your natural state. And, um, but of course we could rotate downwards. But when you rotate, wherever you stop, that is called the terminal side, right? Because you terminated your rotating. So here's an angle with an initial side and a terminal side. And if the initial side is on the positive X axis, that is called in standard position. That's how we tend to draw our angles. We do have directions now for our angles because you can rotate in a counterclockwise or a clockwise direction. And um, in counterclockwise, like you see this arrow, arrow here, is actually a positive direction. <coughs> you may think that counterclockwise um, sorry, clockwise would be a positive direction because we're so used to clockwise. But actually, like we said here, your logical way to draw this angle was to go upward from the horizontal. So that is in a positive direction. If you have a horizontal initial side and you rotate downward to draw your angle, that would be a negative direction. So here's that, that was the vocabulary for some angles. Now, radian measure is, here's the definition of it. It is the measure of a central angle. So a central angle comes from the center of a circle, um, which intercepts an arc of a length that is equal to the radius. So what I mean is, here is, I tried it. This is the best circle I could make. That was like the fourth one. Anyway, here's a radius. Okay, we're going to label that R. Here's what a, a, a radian measure is. And by the way, so I don't forget, where's my calculator? 
when you look on your calculator and you go to mode, here we go. Notice third line down, radian measure is first, not degrees, even though that's out of alphabetical order because it is the most useful. It is what the standard that is used. So when you go to the mode, see if I can get that right. Third line down, that says radians. Okay. So what is a radian measure? It's a much bigger than it, um, a degree measure, right? You have 360 degrees all the way around a circle. So you can picture one degree is like one minute on a clock, right? Uh, well, that's actually 60. So one sixtieth of that, right, would be a degree, right? So what a radian measure is, it is the angle that when you rotate, it makes an arc. Notice this is an arc right here that is just as big as the radius. So of course I'm I, I'm eyeballing this, but I believe I've tried to make this arc as big as the radius. And this is called one, one radian here. Okay. So let's draw that all the way around. Let's see how I can do. Here is another radian. A third radian, a fourth radian, a fifth radian, and a sixth radian. And we have this little piece left over right here. So there's a little bit more than six um, radians that are all the way around a circle, right? Where there's normally 360 degrees. Um, so notice what I've done is I've, I've checked to see how many radii, that's the plural of radius, can I fit on the circumference of this circle? Well, notice that that would be six plus a little bit more. And in fact, it's about 6.28 radii you could fit on the circumference of a circle. And we knew that. Take a look right down here. You knew that the circumference of a circle was 2 pi r, right? How many times is a radius on a circumference? 2 pi. What's 2 pi is a decimal? 6.28, right, when we estimate it. So notice a radian is much bigger, right, than a degree is. So this means let's convert degrees to radians. So obviously all the way around a circle is 360 degrees. And we know in radians, there is two pi, 6.28 radians all the way around a circle. Now, if we take 360 and we divide that by two, we get 180. That means we need to divide two pi by two and we get a pi. This is kind of our standard right here. A half of a circle is equal to pi radians. Let's divide by two again right here. When we divide 180 by two, we get 90. So when we divide pi by two, we get pi over two. So 90 degrees is equal to pi over two radians, right? Now let's, let's get down to the 45, because if we divide 90 by two, we get 45, and pi over two divided by two is pi over four. Okay, um, let's go back, let's go back to the 60. Let's use the 180. Notice if we do 180 divided by three, we get the 60. So that would be pi divided by three. And if we divide 60 by two and pi over three divided by two, we get 30 degrees. And pi over three divided by two is pi over six. There we go. So what we have going on here then is we have nice conversions from degrees to radians. So let's take a look. 
we have, let's, uh, let's just get rid of our little math that we were doing here. 360 degrees is equal to two pi. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. 90 is pi over two, right? 60 is pi over three. 45 is pi over four and 30 is pi over six. Okay, we'll be doing the unit circle together and you'll see how cool that is to fill in. But let's just take another quick look because we're really good at 90 degrees, right? If we had a 90 degree angle here, notice that is one fourth of the circle. Take a look, two pi, is all the way around divided by four, again, you get that pi over two. Just trying to get a sense of it, right? So we could do conversions then, right? So if you have degrees, if you have one degree and you wanna um, convert that to radians, right? That means you would have radians on top and degrees in the uh, radians in the numerator um, degrees in the denominator so that the degrees would cancel. So, right, by conversion analysis. So if you want to switch any degrees that you have to radians, you simply multiply by pi radians over 180. Whatever you want, and we wanted radians, would be in the numerator. To switch from radians to degrees, you would multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Sorry, this is so low. Again, whatever you wanted, um, uh, and we wanted degrees would be in the numerator so that the radians would cancel, okay? But as it turns out, we don't need conversion factors as much as you would think. What if I have 11 pi over six radians? You may say, I really don't know. I, I have no idea, I would have to use um, this conversion factor. I would have to multiply 11 pi over six by 180 over pi. And you're absolutely right, you would get the right answer. But let's look at those small parts that we know. Take a look here. We have pi over six and pi over six we know, it's 30 degrees. So I have 11, 30 degrees and I get 330 degrees. Of course, you are welcome to convert, but it's nice to have the understanding, okay? Three pi over two. To convert that to degrees, of course, we could multiply by 180 over pi. But take a look here. What part do we know? We know what pi over two is. It's 90 degrees. I have three of those. That's 270 degrees. Take a look at the bottom, pi over four. It's a part I know from my little list. Pi over four is 45 degrees. I have three of them. Three times 45 is 135 degrees. So we'll have plenty of time getting used to um, the unit circle in radians and degrees. But I just want you to know, it's actually kind of easier than you would think. So, um, Thank you for hanging out with me on part A and let's do part B.